Greetings everyone and welcome to Distant World Shadows. I'm Larry Monty and I'll be taking you through this Let's Play series. Uh, we're basically going to be playing our pre-warp game. Um, how far we'll go beyond that I really don't know at this point. So we'll just take it by uh, episode by episode and we'll uh, see how far we get. Uh, this is the release version. Uh, it's version 1.9.00. I've actually had this for a few days. It's not actually released until tomorrow. I was on the beta test team, so I've actually been playing this uh, for a few months. And th just remember, that doesn't mean I'm good at it. Uh, it just means I'm a bit experienced at it. So, um, okay, well, with that said, actually, just one more thing before we get going here. Um, my other Let's Play series, um, I my channel now has 10,000 views so I just want to thank everybody who uh, watched and provided comments and likes and all that good stuff for that series. I um, was really pleased with those numbers. It just turned over 10,000 views there the day before yesterday or something like that. So that was kind of cool to see. So I'm glad people are enjoying them and uh, getting something from them. I guess that's the whole point of doing these. So anyways, let's dig in. Um, this is the main menu. And first thing is tutorials. Uh, the, the two tutorials that were here before are still here. And uh, there's two new ones now for playing as a pirate and the pre-warp empire tutorial. So wander through those first, uh, get your feet wet with those. Um, there's some good information, gives you a good background on getting started. Uh, quick starts, I think they're the same. These are basically just map presets, so um, yeah, I don't think much changed in there at all. Uh, start a new game we'll get into in a minute. Load game is self-explanatory. Galactopedia has been all updated with all the new new stuff, uh, all the new information, so uh, refer to that if you have questions. Uh, options, we'll just come in here again quickly. Um, once again, I'm playing expert with no automation. Um, the only other, the only new thing in here, I think, is offer and accept pirate missions. This setting right here. So... And while we're in here, just one more thing. Uh, people keep asking where this setting is. If you don't want your ships to start automated, uh, hang on. It's this button here, Empire Settings. Down here is a little checkbox, Newly Built Ships Are Automated. So just click that off if you don't want them automated right out of the, out of the, uh, the gate. And uh, just I see a lot of questions on where that setting actually is. So that's where it is. Okay, uh, change theme for mods, uh, check for updates, all this stuff, and my name is actually in the credits. I'm not going to show you because it, it's right at the end, basically, so, but that was kind of cool to see. So, uh, all right, let's dig in. So, we'll start a new game. Uh, you got four options here. Uh, these are basically, the, these basically set up some basic, uh, uh, settings for you for this type of, st uh, for, for whatever style of play you're going to do. Um, I'll explain a bit more about that in a minute. But uh, uh, this is your standard game that we're used to from Legends and everything. Uh, this one here, Normal Empire in a Classic Age. So if you just want a regular everyday game that you're used to playing, then grab that one. Uh, you can also play a pirate in that age too. So you can play a pirate in the Classic Age. So the new age, the Age of Shadows, deals with these two. So you can either play as a pirate in the Age of Shadows or as a Normal Empire in the Age of Shadows. So if you want to stop and pause and read all this, you can. I'm not going to read it out. Um, so, But we're going to do this one. Play as a normal empire in the Age of Shadows. So um, we'll come in. Um, just one piece of advice before I start talking about anything is there's some new settings in these screens called pre-warp. If you want to play a pre-warp game in the Age of Shadows, make sure you don't adjust these. Just leave them pre-warp. There's another setting, I think, a technology that has pre-warp. So uh, just just leave those as default, and you'll get the the game you're looking for. Um, I have I have messed with a couple of settings in here. I'm not even sure what the default is. Um, I know that it's usually normal. Uh, I think that was normal. The restless I think was default for this style of game. So uh, yeah, so I've come in. I've gone hard and very expensive. Uh, pirates uh, default at many for this uh, particular game. Leave them there. Uh, crank them down will actually, uh, it'll make the game a bit easier and you won't get as many pirates and as many options to help yourself out and that kind of stuff. So leave it at many. Uh, a couple new things here. Uh, difficulty scales as player nears victory. So what's going to happen is if you're cruising along, you've kicked everybody's butt, you're number one dog on the list and you're going and you're going, you're almost at your victory or nearing it. 
the difficulty is going to kick in and it's going to make it very hard to actually get to that victory. So just because you're top dog now does not guarantee that you're going to get that victory. So just be warned if you click that on that uh, <laughs> victories are going to be oh, much harder. Uh, destroyed pirates do not respawn. That's pretty much self-explanatory there. Okay, default setting, default setting. Uh, this I just go with whatever's recommended. Um, I go with half a sector colonization range limit. Just because we're playing a 4x4 map. Actually, I never did uh, show that. I'm playing a spiral map on a small, tiny, tiny galaxy, or t tiny map with 400 stars. Um, my other... When I was playing Legends, I was 10x10 10 10 with 250s, so... Um, it, that's a very hard game on Shadows, because especially in the pre-warp. Trying to get out and about to, to find uh, other stuff uh, with that few stars is very difficult. So... I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go tiny with more stars for this one. Uh, Pre-warp, of course. Restless. Hard. Normal is good. Um, I just... I don't know. Maybe it's just something with me. I just like to crank it up a notch. Uh, very expensive. Normal. Yeah, so oh, that's good. I already went through that. I backed up to show you the other stuff. <laughs> okay, so we've done all this. So let's go to our race. Humans. I think that's who I was playing last time. So we'll just go random. Um, random government, and there's the other pre-warp setting right here, tech level. So, so between the other one and this one, if you go up to normal on both of those, then it's no longer a classic or, a, or an Age of Shadows game. You've actually made yourself a classic game. So, and with Expelling Empire, and you can pick all kinds of different options here. Blah blah blah. If you've played this before, you know all about them. So, okay, next. Uh, I've set up what nine empires. Seven empires, so there'll be eight of us plus new newly spawned independents will show up too. So, four of them at distant, three at average. Uh, all of them set to start at pre-warp. Okay, and victory conditions. Um, I'm actually using the victory conditions for now. Uh, we'll go with the 20 year. It doesn't mean that we're going <laughs> to achieve victory in 20 years. I haven't seen that even happen yet. So, um, so 33 percent on all these. Uh, Again, I'm not going to go and exp I, I might do another video where I explain all this stuff. I don't know. But I'm sure other people are going to do them too. Um, as far as storylines go, I've disabled these two. Uh, the, if you have them enabled for an Age of Shadows game, they don't really kick in until you get going and you sort of branch out from the pre-warp game into a regular game. That's when the stuff starts kicking in. So it doesn't really make a huge difference in the pre-warp era. So. But we'll definitely enable the Shadow Story events because, well, that's what the pre-warp's all about. Start the game. Oh yes, I'm using half a mod. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Uh, it's, it's Martin's graphic enhancement. Unfortunately, it no longer just drops in. Uh, Martian will have to uh, do some bull. But you can go into the zip files and uh, extract what the, the graphics and put them in the proper places if you want. Um, there was one problem, what was it, I can't remember now, something to do with the shader PNG for the Shadows of the Planets, I had to restore the sh uh, the original one. So it was a bit of monkeying to get these uh, that mod to actually run the way I wanted to. And I didn't use this ship graphics either, I just went with the, the UI and the uh, planets and stuff. So, hey, with the Icarus. Okay, our star of the government is monarchy again, okay. Uh, and we have one colony, one system. Our victory conditions. And we are a standard empire in the Age of Shadows. So pirates, smugglers, and mercenaries rule the galaxy. Blah, 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 blah. So basically they're just saying that uh, uh, pirates are going to rule you for the first little while. Um, so we have no technology like hyperdrives or colonization. We have to research that. So. Um, and a few pointers on what you should do to get going. So I'm going to hit start playing. And I'm going to hit pause. Okay. All right, so let's find out where we are here in the grand scheme of things. All right. So we have a half-range colonization limit, so we can pretty much get to all this. So that's good. We don't know anything about this yet. The only thing we really know is our home planet. That's the only thing we know about the game is what's right here. 
So that's a very cool start. Um, one thing you're going to notice in, in this Let's Play is a bit of choppiness. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the best machine. Um, and record the recording process, unfortunately, is bogging things down a bit. Um, but the game itself runs beautifully. Uh, if you see some chopping in my videos, disregard it because it's not accurate as, as to how the game plays. Uh, even on my old system, if I'm not recording, it runs perfectly. No problem. So expect a bit of chop in my videos, but don't let it concern you because it's uh, it's just uh, the whole recording process. Um, I might actually look into this, uh, a couple other uh, uh, programs for doing this, but uh, we'll, we'll just go with this one for now, for this episode anyways. I'll look into it a bit later. Okay, so... Um, Dugaba. Dugaba 2 is our home planet. And uh, we're the Wekaris, so let's go have a look at the Wekaris. This is. See what they say about them. I won't read through the description, but uh, okay. Ocean, um, very passive, very cautious, very unfriendly, slightly intelligent, quite unreliable. And we have faster mining, 15%, and colony income is plus 25%, which is going to help me out because I always have problems with my money in this game. I don't know what it is, but it's not like my Legends Let's Play where you're going to see me with heaps of cash. I'll tell you that right now. I'm going to be struggling. I know it. Uh, question skin gives us 5% happiness, or five, plus 5 happiness. Uh, development bonus from Dilithium Crystal, and lead gives us another additional development bonus. And this is our victory conditions. 20% of our home world, or control our home world, Duh, that's a no-brainer right there. I guess it can be taken from us, which would help, which would hurt us. Um, spend the least time of war, at war in the galaxy. So I guess we got to play a little peacefully if we need to, which is fine. Uh, build the underwater palace wonder, earn 25%, earn the most trade income in the galaxy, mine the most strategic resources in the galaxy. So that's what we need to do. There's actually five conditions here. Most, I think, are four. So we have an extra condition to fulfill here. Okay, so in uh, bonuses, planet colonization for desert is plus 50%. And the same with volcanic, which means it's going to take us 50% longer to research that tech. Just because we're ocean. We don't do well on planets or volcanics, I guess. Um, we have plus 20% construction rate. And oceans can usually avoid natural disasters, which is nice. Okay, so characters. Uh, we're more likely to generate colony governors. Uh, less likely for fleet admirals and troop generals. But more likely for scientists. So we're definitely going to be science crazy, I think. We have pulse wave cannon, which is our unique weapon. And, okay. So that's what the Wekeris is, is or Wekeri, or however you want to say, is uh, involved. Okay. So we'll come into the tech first. Uh, there is some new stuff in the tech tree. Uh, basically, oh, here's one here, shipboarding. There's a new, uh, a new line for that. And down here is all our ground combat tech. So this whole tree down here is brand new. And there's lots of stuff to research. So in here, uh, I don't think there's a whole lot new in this one. I don't think there's really anything new in that one. Might not be anything really new in this one either. No, I think that's standard. There might be a couple items here and there that have changed a bit, but uh, I think it's pretty much standard. Okay, so gravity weapons. Not right now. First thing I want is armor plating. Must have armor plating, because our ships and bases aren't going to have any armor or any shields right away. So the first thing we want to do is get armor and shields. And basically, once I get armor and shields on my ships and bases, then uh, I'm free to pretty much do uh, what I want with pirates. And we've got transport systems. And this is our research right now. Pretty bad. <laughs> 12k. Okay, so we get no bonuses. Alright. A couple things I like to do in the ship design. Actually, hang on. Just bear with me for one sec here. Get all these automatics off. Oop. Okay. And the latest buildable. We'll go to state ships. Okay, construction ships. Uh, we can just edit because we haven't built anything yet, so we can just edit these designs. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to do 
is put a profile sensor on here. Because what happens uh, is you usually I usually send my explorer off some in one direction and my first constructor off in another. And unfortunately, if that uh, explorer does not explore where the constructor is going, it has no idea what the resources are going to be, if that makes any sense. Uh, basically, you can see the resources before we explore it, if we, should, if we arrive there. So, Okay, so I need to put one of those on. I need some more hub and life support. And I'm going to put some additional ion engines on. Our cruise is 14. Because we have no hyperdrive, so we rely on cruise. So in order to get our cruise up, I'm going to just going to add some ion engines. Try and get to the low 20 somewhere. 20, 21, 22. It's usually pretty good. Okay. There's a pulse blaster on here. You know what? I'm going to rip that off. What's the point of having a weapon? when you're set to evade anyways. So that's just a bit of overhead we don't need. Now one other thing that's new in Shadows is um, boarding defense strength. We got 112 right now. And what this comes from is hab modules mainly. And any other, uh, if there's ship boarding uh, troops on there, then that will also help your uh, defense strength. So because the hub modules crank up this value, I generally put at least one or two extra on. Whether it's helping or not, I don't know. Um, there, so it's got 144 strength now. That's pretty good for, for a ship like this. But it's a pretty big ship too, we can't even build near that size. So That's why we need so many hub modules in the first place. Okay, so we'll save that. And I also like to edit my construction or my explorer ship. I just like to crank on the engines for this thing. Yep. And I basically put as many as the ship will handle. There. So we'll pull one more off. And there. So it's going 49. So that's going to be a nice quick exploration ship for the beginning. Uh, I'm just going to throw one more fuel cell on here. And they're over, so I'll take one more engine off. So 46, that's pretty good too. Okay. So that's basically all I do with ships right now. Okay. So we looked at designs. Okay, so a quick look in here at Monarchy, minus 30% more awareness. Faster troop recruitment, but that's pretty much it. Everything else is normal. Okay, if we look at the West Chris, uh, there's our 15% faster mining, 25% colony income, and plus 14. This is a, this is leader stuff. We'll look at the leader here in a sec. Oh, I I think I'll go shut that off. I don't need that running for these. I save after every episode, anyways. So I'll let that crank for a sec. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, calling the income plus 14%, calling the happiness minus 10. That kind of sucks. I hate when that happens. Um, okay. And actually, while it's on my brain, let's just click that off. So no more auto saves. And resume. Okay. So as you can see, we have zero, zero, zero. We have nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay. So, um, that's got to start it on that. Let's have a look at the characters. Um, we got a scientist right away. So as soon as we get something built, we'll assign him. He has, well, look at the weapons research on him. Unfortunately, I'm going to want the energy research bonus first, because that's, that's the tree our uh, warp drives sit in. So I'll probably be putting him on the energy station first, weapon station later. So, let's have a look at our leader. Ooh, calling income plus 14. Yeah, we already looked at this, didn't we? On the other screen, so that's good. And intelligence agent, I'll just uh, get him to counter espionage. Okay, so this is the new achievement screen. As you can see, I haven't done much with this particular version. 
I cleaned everything out before I started playing this one. So, so it's pretty basic right now. Um, gives you a uh, breakdown of uh, where your points are coming from. So, so that's pretty interesting. Vic usual victory conditions. Okay, so that was the new screen in there, and if we come into here, we now have some extra columns in the screen. So you can tell your stock, what's in transit, what's unfulfilled, like the the resource system or the resource uh, distribution in the in shadows is very good. Um, you can tell a lot more about what's going on with resources. So uh, it takes a bit to get on to. Um, especially if you're new to the game, but uh, yeah, so that was all really nice to see. So as you can see, we got a whole bunch of sources of zero. We got nothing. Basically what's on our home planet is all we got. So, speaking of home planet, let's have a look here. So this is our initial cargo. This is what we start with. Uh, depending on where your uh, difficulty slider is will probably depend on how much you get. Um, that's something I should note too is the difficulty slider when you're setting up a game scales everything in the game now. Before I think it just made the, the AI more difficult but now it actually affects stuff like how many resources your colony gets, um, how accurate your firepower is, and you know it, it, it actually touches everything. So that slider is very very uh, very important in, these, in this game. So if you go to extreme difficulty you're you're playing an extreme difficulty for sure. So okay, so that's what we start with. So it's a, it's enough to get a spaceport, some ships and stuff and a couple bases going. So, so um it's enough to get you going. Uh let's have a look at our population. They're just satisfied they're not overly static, so we'll have to look into increasing that. Um Okay, I'm just going to drop that down to 30% just to make it an even number. Shouldn't affect that too much. Probably 11. No, it didn't even touch that. Okay. So, I have a bit of a system I use my tax rates for, so I'll get into that a bit later if you didn't catch that in my Legends uh, Let's Play. Okay, so now we got to build some stuff here. So, first thing we got to build before we do anything is a small spaceport. Okay. Don't build the construction ship first thinking that you're going to get all kinds of resources because the first thing this construction ship has to do before it builds anything is pick up resources to build with. And if there's no spaceport, it can't get them. So it's it's tempting to do the construction ship first, but you can't do anything with it until you get the spaceport. So we'll do that second. We have energy research, high-tech research station, and the weapons research station. So this is my initial build for this planet. That's, uh, that's it right there. And the research stations, I do this in a particular order. Energy, high-tech, and then weapons. Because energy, like I said, the energy tree is where your warp drives are. Um, high-tech is your colonization, all that stuff. So, I mean, these two are very important. Uh, weapons is important, but um, to get out of the pre-warp, you definitely want to hit energy and a bit on the high-tech. Okay, so we'll let that go. Um, I think we're pretty much ready to get going here, so let's take it off pause. Uh, one thing I do in the pre-warp is I generally play at 4x speed, because the pre-warp is somewhat, uh, I, would, I wouldn't say boring, but non-eventful for the most part. And here's an event here, but um, this, these are pirates that have just shown up at our planet here. So, greetings to our victims. You may have noticed we are about to attack you, but for the small price of 850 credits per month, we can avoid this unnecessary violence. Of course, you really should have paid up sooner. Now that our attacks are underway, we have no choice but to increase our prices. So, are you ready to pay up now? My advice is yes. Um, basically, because even if we do build some ships to protect ourselves, before we get shields and, and armor, <laughs> they're going to cut through them like nothing. So right now our best option is to pay the protection fee. Once we get ourselves built up a bit, we can cancel that. Okay, so off they go. Now you see the choppiness. The reason that's happening is, number one, I'm recording. Number two, I'm <laughs> recording at 4x speed. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're watching this. Okay, a little blurb about what just happened with the pirates. 
we have avoided a pirate raid on our home world, um, Daguba 2. Uh, in the past, there are rumors of secret visits from star travelers, but recently these visitors have, from the stars have begun to appear openly. Some are hostile, taking whatever they want by force. Others come in peace and trade. Ancient legends speak of a time when our own ancestors once traveled the stars. Uh, but with the great forgetting, all this knowledge was lost. So we were in the stars, forgot about it, I guess. Now we're back. Whatever. <laughs> Many of our people say that now is the time for us to return to the stars. With the technology that we have acquired from some of our stellar visitors, it would be possible to once again become a space-firing civilization, which is the whole point of what we're doing here. Okay. So, now if we come back in here, we see we have pirate protection fee of 10k per year. So every year we got to pay out 10k, which leaves us 7,700, which is better actually than most of my games. Most of my games, that pirate protection puts me in the red. So uh, that's a kind of a bonus right off the boat, right off the start. Now what is this? That's their wow. Huh. That's weird. I haven't seen that happen before. Okay, so we come in here, the diplomacy screen, we can look in here and see that they have 15 military ships, so they're pretty powerful. They are very powerful with one smuggling freighter. Um, one thing we can do, but we don't have the freaking weaponry for it, is take this out. And that would cripple that pirate faction because they cannot build more uh, construction ships until much later. If maybe much later, if they actually get to uh, control a colony. So that's kind of interesting. That's sitting right there. Um, oh, I heard gunshots, but well, he took off. Anyways. Um, Spaceport constructed. We have constructed a spaceport. This large orbital base serves as a shipyard, allowing us to build many different types of starships. So it just goes in to say that blah, 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 blah. Okay, we can short term boost our economy because of the trade and everything it'll bring. Um, yeah, trade bonuses in commerce. So if you want to pause the video and read through this, that's fine. I don't know whether I'm going to read all these to you. Okay. So now that we have a spaceport, we now have our uh, build queues we can work with. Um, I no longer use this screen, the build order screen. It, it just doesn't give me enough control. It uh, it just willy-nilly builds stuff wherever, and I like to control where I build stuff. So I don't use that anymore. I actually come in here into the uh, construction yard screen, and I use this. So in here, I'm going to build an explorer and two escorts. Now the escorts aren't going to do much because they have no shields or armor or anything. So I mean, they'll just get killed the minute they make contact. But uh, it just makes me feel better having them out there. Okay. So and actually, hang on. I should have. Uh, let's go into military ships. I would like to automate those because I clicked off that option that I showed you at the beginning. So I'm working backwards to where I was in the Legends Let's Play, so I'm on in that regard anyway. I didn't even notice what time I started this Let's Play, so... Yeah, I generally go in half-hour chunks, but I'm not sure just when I started this now. I didn't look. So Okay, Lone Trader. Uh, we have encountered a lone starship in our system, the... Uh, whatever. It, it does not appear to be hostile, but rather an independent space trader. So, could there be more ships like this? Eh, I'm thinking. So, that's him there. And we've constructed our first starship. Okay, and this event marks the beginning of our return to the stars. Okay. Like I said, don't mind the choppiness. This is 4x speed. If I slow this right down, back to normal speed, it uh, it runs a bit better. Um, 
I was hoping I'd be able to get another machine before I started doing any more of these Let's Plays, but uh, life has a funny way of not letting that work out for you. Okay. Uh, we have uh, an Explorer. So first thing I need to do is find fuel. And this looks like a pretty good candidate here. So we're going to move here with the Explorer. And... Oh. I had the construction ship... Uh, Okay. Well, I've, I'm pretty sure that's who I want to move there, but... Okay, so let's go back to the construction ship, and we'll give them a build order. Uh, I'm pretty confident there will be Kesla on there, so... But we won't know until this little ship here gets there. And a research station is constructed. So close that. Come into our characters. Oh, okay. Just uh, ooh. Oh, we got two. Oh, I was just gonna say what happened to his bonuses, but yeah, we got two. Awesome. Okay. Uh, okay. First thing I want to do though. Let's come back into ships and bases. Go to research stations. These aren't named very well, I don't think. Um, the term research is implied as far as I'm concerned, so I just take that word out and replace it with whatever type of uh, research station it is. So, and this one's a high tech. So. And the last one is a weapons. Okay, and you're probably wondering why I like to rename this, and for the sole purpose of this. Now when I drop this down, I know exactly what kind of station I'm looking at. It's an energy center. So I don't want him there, actually. I want him at the spaceport for now, until we get the high-tech center built. So put him there, and you, we want in that energy center to get that right now. So, transfer you. Okay. So now if we come back in, look at our research stations, we can see we have the energy built. Okay, and we're getting the bonus for that now. One thing I've been toying with is maybe not building the research one right away. And that way the uh, tech gets more distributed between those. Because these are the important ones to get out of pre-warp. I'm almost wondering if I shouldn't do that. Nah, I'll leave it. I'll leave all three. But it's something to consider for the future, for sure. Okay, so our explorer's getting there. I don't know whether you can see that on the... And again, yeah, it's choppy at 4x. So maybe if we slow this down, just... There. Yeah, it's a little smoother. But slower. So we're just going to put up with the choppiness until we get out of pre-warp. I'm not exactly sure how far I'm going to go with this particular series. Okay, so I'll pause. And there is Kazlon there. So the construction ship is on its way already to come do that. Okay. Um, so let's have a look at these four as well. We don't know what's on them yet. So I'm going to move to here. But I'm going to do all these at the same time. So I'm going to queue the next three to so come down here to queue next mission. We'll move. Again, queue next mission. We'll move to there. And queue ne yeah, next, next mission, and we'll move to there. Okay, so if we double click on the uh, ship name, we come in here, we can see that we have missions queued up. So anytime you have queued missions, you can just double-click the ship name in the in the uh, status box here, and this will tell you what it's doing. Unfortunately, I don't think you can really edit them. Uh, you can cancel particular ones. Like if I move here, if I'm in the middle of doing this one, and hit stop, it'll just go on to the next one. But uh, it'd be nice to have a way to. I might actually suggest that a way to uh, to edit queued missions. Yeah, maybe it's already implemented. I'm just missing it. Okay, so that ship is going to go up here. 
Now it's going to come over here. And it's going to do that full loop. So that's how to use the queue anyway. Okay, I see our research stations are done. So come back in here. You're good at high tech, so I'm going to stuff you in the high tech station. Having him at the spaceport was actually giving us a hit to our weapons research. So that's why I'm putting on him on a specific uh, high tech station. Now, this guy. Oh, has no traits. Okay. So that's just his default traits. Hmm. That's interesting. I've never seen that before. Oh, I'll keep an eye on that. Okay. And one more thing we can do now. I should go back in here. This is some intelligence agents against those pirates. So let's cancel this. The very first thing I want to know is the galaxy. I'm going to steal their galaxy map. And stealing against pirates is very difficult. So uh, we got a 50-50 chance of pulling this off. So we'll see what happens. But I find it very important to get that map. Because that uh, pretty much tells us our own system as well. I don't have to go around and explore our own system anymore. And it will give us uh, our surrounding systems out in the galaxy. Okay. And we just took a hot a tech a tech hit from uh, that scientist we put on our high tech station. Pursuing the wrong path. Back to 7%. That kind of sucks. Okay, so. Ooh, pirates are in. Pirates just took out those slugs for us. We're in the middle of. Uh, again, the chopping is because of the 4x speed. Ah, didn't finish him. 99%. 73%. Okay. Well, sometimes they'll help you out and take those out, but uh, not that time, I guess. Okay, uh, I'm just going to pause for a sec. I'm going to zoom in. There's an abandoned ship right here. Okay. Um, it is going to have some good tech on it. So what I'm going to do is build another construction ship for the sole purpose of repairing this. Okay, and that ship is usually in, a, in every starting sh system. I've come across one or two games where that wasn't present, but uh, for the most part, you get two runes and two. I think there's two ships. There's another one somewhere in here, if I remember correctly, or if other games are any indication. There it is. There it is. So, yeah, you usually end up with two runes and two abandoned ships. Not always, but usually. So I think it's just randomly dealt by the game. So okay, so uh, first thing we're going to do with this, or not the first thing, but the next thing is I'm going to move to here, figure out those runes. So we're going to prior to prioritize uh, getting these runes. I'm going to queue this next mission up. Okay. And we'll let that run again. Yeah, 4x speed usually doesn't run this choppy if I'm not recording. This recording process eats up a lot of processor. Because the particular one I'm using isn't... Oh, they're back. You want to take care of those for us, hopefully? Uh, the recording software I'm using... Um, it's a good one, and it, and it actually uh, prepares a video on the fly, so it's doing all that work at the same time. Uh, where other ones you basically record, and then you throw them into Windows Movie Editor and muck with them that way. But I'm trying to avoid that process, so I'm going to try and stick with this one if I can uh, get it to work for me. Okay, so we got a mining. Our first mining ship, our station has been constructed. That's that gas miner we uh, queued up to be built, so it's done. So now that we got. Uh, Come on, guys. Not very effective at getting rid of these. 
Yeah. Probably more effective at killing my ships, though. Okay, so now we got two construction ships. So I got the original one. Now, what I want to do is find some steel as well. Steel is another important one to get right away. There's some 82%, 83%, 61 um, All right. We'll build a mining station there. And then this one, we're going to take over to start repairing this. It takes a long time to repair this. So that's why I like to get going on it uh, as soon as I can. Okay, you just have to... Oh, I don't even... Uh, yeah, I should at least check that. Hang on, just bear with me for a sec. I just want to know what uh, point I'm at recording. Oh, 40 minutes. Okay. Okay, well, maybe we'll uh, call this one to a close here shortly. Uh, we have discovered the retreat of Deguba. Ancient ruins. Uh, surveying for more indicates the ruins sit on a ledge overlooking a fiery lake of lava. So, investigate ruins. And we got some credits out of it. 8,400. Okay. So, yeah, maybe we'll just uh, pause this and we'll bring this one to a close. I didn't realize we went to 40 minutes. i got to start the timer again. Uh, I used to time these, but I neglected to do that this time. So, uh, okay. Well, that's episode one done. I'm going to try and work on maybe getting this to run a little better, but I think it's mainly the 4X thing that's giving me some grief. Um, that speed and uh, recording and everything is just slowing things down, but we'll bear with it for the pre-warp anyways, because there's, there's not a whole lot that's going to go on, and uh, the 4X speed uh, will get us through it quicker, rather than taking four episodes to get through it. We can do it in two or something like that. So there we go, Distant World Shadows. I hope everyone enjoys it. It is a brilliant expansion. I will say that about it. Um, I don't think I've ever been impressed with an expansion for any other game the way I am with this one. Uh, it just radically changed everything. So be prepared for that. If you're coming off of Legends going into uh, Shadows, that it is a completely different experience. A lot of similar stuff, but uh, you're going to find a lot of your, uh, your uh, strategies uh, going to need some reworking for sure so i hope you enjoyed it um i will be back with more episodes uh, like i said i'm not sure how far we'll take this particular let's play i'm going to make sure i get uh, out of the pre-warp era anyways and into some colonization beyond our own system and uh we'll see after that how it's going and we'll take it from there so thanks for watching and uh stick around we'll be back shortly with another episode thanks for watching